everyone. I am Kalpana Pandit, actor, independent producer, and today I am representing the House of Pandit Production House as well as Entertainment and Sports Today. And uh, let me say I'm very delighted. I had the honor of watching the world premiere of a incredible documentary on postpartum depression, When the Bow Breaks. And uh, after the premiere, which was uh, received overwhelmingly with a positive response by a jam-packed audience, I am honored to have with me the director of the film, Jamie Lynn Lipman, with me. And welcome to the show, and thank you for being with us. I am very delighted to have you. Great, thank and, uh, you. And also a, a, a huge thank you for creating this amazing film. So first of all, Jamie Lynn, may I ask, what inspired you to make this particular film on this particular subject? Well, first off, thank you so much for having me and um, coming to see the film. It means a lot. So, um, This originally started about six years ago. I met Tanya Newbold. Um, I was making a documentary about actors. And Tanya's an actress, and I interviewed her. We got to talking afterwards. And she said, you know, I, she, was a, she had a one-year-old daughter, and I had just had a baby. And we, we were talking both being moms, and she said, you know, I had really bad postpartum depression when I had my daughter, and I couldn't find information about it. You know, there really needs to be a documentary about this. Would you be interested in doing something like that? And I thought, well, I didn't have it. I don't really know anything about it. All I knew about it is what I think most people think about it is what you see in the news. And these unfortunate horrible, tragic things that happen to kids. And, um, but then, you know, I said, you know what, let, let, me, let me think, let me look into it and uh, I'll go from there. So I went home that day and I started doing some research on t um, online and I looked and this actually affects uh, today, it affects, at the time it affected one in seven women, but today it affects one in five women. Uh, new moms after childbirth, and the number is actually now, they're saying that statistics, it's more like one in four. I was part of this group online called City Mommy, and there's uh, all these like kind of subcategory groups, and I posted an ad saying looking for women to interview in a doc for a documentary about postpartum depression. Just wanted to see what kind of response I would get. And within 24 hours, I had over 100 women write wanting to share their stories. And it, it blew my mind. It, it, it just showed me that this is a huge epidemic and people are talking about it. Yes. And if I have all these misconceptions, what must everybody else must, must feel the same? And a lot of these women, when they were writing, it said you know, that their main reason for wanting to share their story was to help other women because they had the same thing. They couldn't find information. It's such a, there's so much stigma and shame around it. And as a filmmaker and a mom, I felt compelled. There was there was no other option. I had to make this documentary. Excellent, and I applaud you for that because yeah. the way they have portrayed uh, the film is so real and yet so captivating because as a documentary, you know, it is important that we pull in audiences from all across the world to watch it. And uh, the way she has presented the material and the real life protagonists who are actually in the film have actually gone through this condition and are some of them are still fighting it. And also there, she has shown some of the really tragic instances, as she said, um, about what has happened to the mothers or what has happened to the child, which has ended in terrible tragedy. So may I ask, Jamie Lynn, during the making, do you have any very memorable experiences? This is more of a, a, just an interaction so that the audiences know yeah. what kind of memorable experiences you had during the filming. Uh, obviously, you must have a ton of them, but please tell our audiences a couple of what, what you would like to. Well, first off, when I decided that I was going to basically put my life into this project, um, and it's you know starting it from scratch, I knew that I didn't want to make just a, a cause educational film. That's not the kind of documentarian that I am, and that's not the kind of I'm a storyteller. Um, and albeit it's a hundred percent real, and that's but but my style is. I just thought you know for me, I don't want t talking heads of just women sitting around talking about postpartum depression because that's going to be a very limited audience. That's not going to reach a lot of people. And if you hear about that. Unless you have it or you're pregnant, it didn't feel that it would be of mass appeal. And so I thought, okay, there's got to be 
there's got to be a, a through line. There's got to be someone to care about. And fortunately, um, Lindsay was someone that we met in the early beginning stages, and she was still suffering. And she agreed to let the let let me film her and have this entire thing documented. Um, so. We get to go through that process of having that kind of make main character that's threaded throughout the entire film. And then my style, just something I like to do, and I, I really like it when I see it in documentaries. Um, I'm a really big fan of uh, Andrew Jarecki, um, who made The Jinx. And so I thought, you know what, we're going to bring a cameraman on the road and we're going to show how this entire thing on, unfolds. Mm -hmm. And so I think that now when you watch the film it, and from the response to the night it appeals to so many i mean it, it appeals to everyone yes, yes. Um, and, and i i think the biggest you know not only is that my filmmaking style why i needed to do that but i also knew for this cause because it's such a it, it's it's a public health issue in babies are dying women are dying this is really serious stuff i knew that it needed to reach as many people as possible and i think the way that the film is, it will. I, th I surely think it will because, uh, like I said, I was very lucky to be part of the world premiere. So, Jamie Lynn, what, where do you see this film eventually reaching? What is your... Um, I know myself, I would love for every single woman and man across the world to watch this because uh, there's also places in the film where you have shown partners who are extremely supportive of the women who are going through this. So, um, where would you like to eventually reach with this film? I mean, I'd like to, we kind of have a three-tiered plan. I'd like to see it end up somewhere like HBO or Viceland or PBS Independent Lens um, and then be released on all of the channels, you know, Netflix, iTunes. Um, that's kind of the, the kind of the plan with it. And to go back to your, you know, most memorable things, I mean, this was a very hard film to make emotionally. Um, you know, when I'm looking at a woman having her recount, killing her child for two hours, um, you know that that doesn't that's hard to to process, yes. and it's a lot of sleepless nights come along with that. But I knew, so it's it. The memories are, you know, I guess I guess to say like the memories for me is when I saw how making this film already started to make change. You know, Lindsay started a Facebook page early on and she controls and runs that thing. She posts articles, she answers everybody's email. And to see from the women that I interviewed and how they felt after they uh, they got this off their chest and, and they felt not alone. And once they shared how I saw that change them and change people around them and then they started to speak out to other people, because that's the biggest thing about this is the shame and the stigma because nobody wants to be associated with what they think some of the postpartum depression has. And that's, I think that's one of the driving forces of making, of, of really putting my life into this film um, for the past six years. Yeah, and I actually see that. I see the, the journey actually captured in real time as as time went on and, and, uh, and the women in the film went through emotional highs and lows and how they, they dealt with it. Everything she has patiently and diligently captured on screen, and I think that's a very brilliant thing to do to help other women who are going through this. And I, I believe also the executive producer is Brooke Shields, who um, it, the book that she wrote, Down Came the Rain, was one of the reasons that you all connected with her and brought her on board. Yeah, so Tanya, when she told me in the beginning when she experienced it she didn't know what was wrong with her she was you know never been depressed and and that's the thing that this can happen to anyone um, you can have all the help in the world and um, be the happiest person and have the best baby and it can still happen to you and so she didn't understand what was happening she didn't even know that she could even possibly have something called postpartum depression and so she got turned on to Brooke Shields book Down Came the Rain and as she was reading it, she said, oh my God, this is what I have. And she said that book saved her. So when we met, it was always a goal of hers to have her involved. And she came on and narrated the film and, uh, as an executive producer. So and I, I congratulate thankful. you for also pulling in a powerful name in cinema because what happens is when you associate 
uh, a celebrated artist also with all your other artists in the film who are real life protagonists it adds a, a tremendous dimension of other people wanting to watch it so uh, all of you she's associated with it Brooke Shields is, is uh, supportive of this film so please go and see it it's, it's a tremendous film so um, my next uh, question to you is how do women across the world who may feel that uh, you know maybe the problem is hitting them maybe the condition is hitting them in initially how do they, how do they even start to seek help i mean the first thing to do is to talk about it so to tell your loved ones tell your spouse it can happen and there, there you know i want to i want to explain that there is very you know when we say that statistics being you know at one in four women uh, one in four new moms after childbirth that can be from the baby blues to the most extreme. When you're talking about psychosis, which is having a psychotic break with reality, which unfortunately leads, it can lead to infanticide, that's more like one and two in a thousand. Um, but in this film we cover, you know, baby blues to psychosis and everything in between. So if you feel there's something wrong and things are just not right, um, the key is to speak up about it and just to not keep it in because keeping it in is what makes it get worse. Yes. Um, there's a lot of support out there. PSI, um, Postpartum, Postpartum Support International, you can go on their website. They have a hotline that anyone can call any time of the day and they'll have someone that can talk to them and give them help of you know, how to, um, how to approach it. Yeah, and I, and I think that you know it, because it could be anything from sleep deprivation, hormonal changes, problems with breastfeeding, you know, your body chemistry changes when you have a baby. And I think that you need to, you need to have people around you, you know, it does take a village. You need to ask for help. And, and that's, that's the biggest key because if you speak out, you'll recover from this. Great. And you have, I believe in the film too, you have uh, given the information about the hotline availability yes. on there. So that's brilliant too. Yeah. When you see the film, you can directly check, uh, uh, take the, the information off of there. And our website, if you go to our website too, we have a section um, that has educational links that gives you all of the resources that you'll need. And that is uh, www.whenthebowbreaksfilm.com. Perfect, perfect. Um, I, I also noticed, now that you brought it up, that you said it takes a village. And I did notice in the film that you had shown a couple of instances where uh, there are certain cultures where all the, the there's huge support for women because they understand that this is a period when a woman needs that and needs that break from uh, her regular routine of life because she's going through so much. Uh, I think that was also very, very brilliantly done and I hope you you continue maybe a sequel or something where you show more of this where how how different cultures and different women approach this uh, this particular issue and you know it, it just helps to bring more awareness and, and helps us to understand how to solve it so that was a very brilliant movement on your part as well so finally I'm very happy to have you here I know you're a very busy person so uh, thank you for being here with us so much but I have um, any final words that you would want to tell our audiences across the world about your film and uh, feel free to please yeah I guess the final thing that I'll say is that there is no you know you can't pick out or pinpoint what someone with postpartum depression would have because it can happen to anyone and I think you need to, if you have, that means that women that you know could be suffering in silence. So if you have friends that have new babies um, and you notice that they're not just quite right, uh, feel free to, to speak out to them and ask if things are okay. Sometimes just having someone there can make all the difference in the world. And if you, something, if, if you don't feel right, then just uh, speak up. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. And thank you for those final words with this interview. And I would strongly recommend every person go and watch the film, When the Bow Breaks. And as soon as it's available in, in your areas, look out for it, watch it. It's a brilliant film. Thank you so much to thank director you. Jamie Lynn Lipman, who's here with us. Thank you for your time and your information. Thank we really you. appreciate it.